Hey everybody and welcome back to my kitchen or welcome if you are new. My name is Bethany or Budget Bethany and if you have been over here with me for a little while and you know that I have been MIA for the past few weeks but I'm back today. I'm so sorry y'all. Y'all know sometimes life just gets in the way but nonetheless I'm back today and I'm going to be sharing four super easy weeknight dinners with y'all so I hope you'll just keep on watching. <music> Alright y'all, so to kick off this week's what's for dinner, I'm going to be baking some chicken legs. We're going to throw some barbecue sauce on them as well. i got some creamed corn, some green beans, and some deviled eggs. So as you can see right here on the screen, I've got my chicken all seasoned up on my baking pan with the little rack and everything. We like our chicken to be kind of crispy, so I don't want it to sit in all the juices and everything. So that's why I've got it on the rack. And I recently found this new Accent Flavor Enhancer seasoning, and I have been using it in a everything that i've been cooking over here lately so you'll be seeing a lot more of that in the weeks to come with new watts for dinners and everything but it really does make your food taste really good y'all so if you can find any i'll try to find the link and link it for y'all in my description box you got to give it a try so as you can see right here i'm just adding in some barbecue sauce into a bowl we're going to rub that onto our chicken legs i have already been baking my chicken legs for about 30 minutes so once it got to the 30 minute mark i took them out i'm going to add the barbecue sauce to them and then once i get all the barbecue sauce added to all of the chicken legs i'm going to throw it back in the oven for about another 30 minutes <music> Now that I got the chicken all taken care of and it's in the oven cooking, I'm going to start preparing my sides. So as you can see, I just have some of that pick sweet cream corn. I'm going to throw that into my pan or my pot and I'm going to add in a little bit of butter. And I also went back and added in a little bit of sugar just to make it extra sweet and some salt and pepper. And then of course my green beans come out of the can. I just dumped them in there and add a little bit of chicken and bouillon cube. And that was that. So for my deviled eggs, all I did was throw in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eggs brought those to a bowl once they were boiled i shelled them and then i um halved them i cut the yolks out and left the other part the white part on my plate i'm going to mix some mayonnaise some dill relish and some paprika and some salt and pepper together and then we're going to fill our eggs with that and i always like to mention stuff like that just in case there's some new cooks in here and you're learning how to cook so that way you'll know what to do then once i get all my eggs filled up i sprinkled on some paprika <music> And then once my 30 minutes were up, I removed my chicken from the oven and this is how it looked, y'all. I know it doesn't look very appetizing on that baking sheet, but it is really good. So don't knock it till you try it. This is our favorite way to eat barbecue chicken. We just do not like it sitting in all the juices. On this day, I also decorated my house for Christmas and I know I haven't been sharing a whole lot over here, so I figured I would include a clip of my living room for y'all. Moving right along into the next night, we had some pizza roll-ups as well as a side salad. So I have cooked this over here on my channel before and my kids absolutely love it and it's a win-win for a busy week night. It's easy cleanup and it's really no hassle to make this dinner. So I was all for it when my kids said they wanted it. So all you'll need is a roll of crescent rolls. I usually get two because we are a family of five and I want to make sure that we have plenty because usually, you know, you're going to eat around two or three of them because they're pretty small. So anyway, all you'll need is your can of, um, your, or your package of crescent rolls. You'll take out your crescent rolls. You'll, um, roll them flat. You'll add some sauce. You can use pizza sauce, marinara sauce, or spaghetti sauce, whichever one you prefer. But anywho, you're basically just going to fill this crescent roll up with whatever kind of pizza toppings that you prefer. I'm just using, um, cheese and pepperoni, but you probably could use some black olives. You could use some cheddar cheese if you prefer it. The options are endless, you know, just make this how you would like your pizza and I'm sure it's going to be good. But once you get all of your toppings added into your crescent roll, you're just going to roll that up. And then you're going to bake it by the directions on the crescent roll package.
Also, y'all, I would like to mention that I am a sauce person, and I know that these do not have a lot of sauce on them. That's because it's really messy if you add a whole lot of sauce. It's better just add a little bit on there and then use some for dipping or anything like that. It's just easier that way because it's really hard to roll if you've got a lot of sauce on there. But here's how my plate looked once it was all plated up. Like I said, we just had a side salad, and it was a win-win for dinner on that night. Up next, I'm going to be making some shrimp quesadillas as well as some Spanish rice to go with them. So for my shrimp quesadillas, I'm going to do is use some of the shrimp that you can get from Walmart in the frozen section or the freezer section. I think they're around like $5 or something. They're like, I get the extra small size and I believe they're like tail off, you know, pre-cooked and all that good old stuff. Anyway, I just get the shrimp from Walmart in the frozen section and they're around $5. I'm pretty sure most of y'all know what I'm talking about. So I just poured those into a bowl. Um, I didn't defrost them or anything. They're still pretty frozen, but then I'm going to add all my seasonings to my shrimp and I'm using some of more of that accent that I was telling y'all about earlier. Some onion powder, some garlic powder, some chili and lime seasoning, and some hardcore carnivore seasoning. It's like a Tex-Mix seasoning, so it kind of tastes like a taco, basically like taco seasoning. So I'm going to add some olive oil to my shrimp and then I'm going to start seasoning them all up. Shake, shake, shake the shrimp. Make sure it gets good and coated. <laughs> no, y'all, I'm just kidding. But anyway, you do want to shake your shrimp so that you can make sure that all the shrimp get good and seasoned. And in my pan back there, I just added some butter. I'm going to let that butter melt down. Once my butter does melt down, I'm going to add my shrimp into the pan and let them cook in that butter and get good and buttery. And then, oh my goodness, I almost forgot that I wanted to add some lime juice into my shrimp. So I just um, cut me a lime in half and I'm squeezing some of the lime juice in there on top of my shrimp. Also, by the way, I did cook my shrimp on a low medium heat just because it doesn't take shrimp very long to cook, especially when they're that little. But I did want all that juice to cook out because I didn't need all that juice in there. So once I got all the juice cooked out, the shrimp were good and ready to start making our quesadillas. So I've got this George Foreman grill that I think I got at Walmart for around $20. I think I linked it in a past What's for Dinner video, but if I can find a link and it's still good, I'll link it in my description box for y'all. So I just placed a tortilla on, or first I sprayed my George Foreman grill because I didn't want it to stick. Then I put um, my tortilla on there and I put some, a little bit of that queso, quesadilla cheese on there. And then I went in with my shrimp and then I went in with a little bit more of that cheese because I like a lot of cheese y'all. But of course you can add however and little as much as you like because it's your kitchen, you're making your own food. But I like to add a lot to mine. So that's what I did. Then I just closed it and kind of let it cook for a little while on one side, probably about two or three minutes, I would say. And then I just kind of flipped it just to make sure that it gets good and evenly crispy on both sides. And then I just took it out and I did roll one halfway just because I didn't really want two big old quesadillas. Also, I did make some Spanish rice to go with our shrimp quesadillas, but I've made that in a past video. So I'll find that video and I'll link that down below so that y'all can get the recipe to make the Spanish rice as well. And then I feel like the last night of this week is pretty explanatory. We have BLT, so you'll need some bacon. And I've just got some King Cotton Hickory Smoked Bacon. I throw that onto my bacon pan and popped it in the oven, I'd say, for about 30 minutes, give or take. And then once the bacon was done, 
look how beautiful it was y'all i could eat bacon every day of the week i'm pretty sure but anyway while that bacon was cooking i cut up my lettuce and my tomatoes so here are my lettuce and my tomatoes so then i just had to assemble my sandwich and i did toast my bread and pop on my bacon and my lettuce and my tomato and dinner was served we had some chips on the side and that was it but i wanted to say thank you all so much for watching this week's what's for dinner i hope you all enjoyed it and i hope you'll leave me a thumbs up before you leave i'm sorry i've been missing over here for a few weeks but i hope you'll forgive me i'm back i love you and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye, y'all.